right, so uh, today, let's look into something pretty fascinating, goat digestion. You ever think about it? These animals can survive on a diet that would leave most of us, uh, well, pretty unsatisfied. Yeah. So how do they do it? We've got some research on goat nutrition we're gonna unpack to answer that very question. It really is incredible. You know, goats are such efficient eaters. They're even better at extracting nutrients from, you know, tougher, low quality food than other grazers, mm. even sheep. Ah. And this is especially important, this ability in a harsher environments where resources might be scarce. That's fascinating. I've always known goats were hardy, but I never realized they outperform sheep in that way. Yeah. So what's the secret behind this digestive superpower? It all comes down to their unique digestive system. Okay. Goats, like cows and sheep, are what we call ruminants. Okay. Meaning they have a four-chambered stomach. What? It's like this complex fermentation factory working to break down that fibrous plant material. Four stomachs? Four stomachs. I never would have guessed. How do they all fit in there? It's amazing, really. Mm -hmm. Each chamber has its own special role to play in the digestive process. Mm -hmm. And the first chamber, which we call the rumen, is the biggest and arguably the most important. Okay. So the rumen is where the magic happens. What makes it so special? It's basically a bustling city of microbes. Ah. Bacteria, protozoa, and fungi all working together to break down those tough plant fibers that goats love to munch on. So it's not just the goat doing the work then, it's a team effort with these tiny little helpers. That's right. It's a symbiotic relationship. Hmm. The microbes get a nice, warm, moist environment to thrive in, and in return, they break down the food into nutrients the goat can absorb. Incredible. So it's like this whole little ecosystem just living inside their stomach. Yeah. But wait, the research also mentions rumination. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? So rumination, or chewing cud, is another key part of goat digestion. Okay. You're probably seeing goats kind of chewing on nothing, right? Right. They're actually regurgitating that partially digested food from the rumen back up to their mouth to chew it some more. Ah, so that's what's happening. I've always wondered about that. Yeah. Why do they go through that extra step? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Huh. First, it helps break down the food even more, giving those microbes more surface area to work their magic on. Gotcha. And second, chewing creates saliva, which is important for keeping the right pH balance in the rumen. Oh, so saliva isn't just for swallowing then. What happens if the pH balance gets thrown off? I know the research mentioned a condition called acidosis. Right. That sounds pretty serious. It can be. Yeah. Acidosis happens when the rumen gets too acidic. Okay. Often because of a diet too high in grains or sugars. <gasps> this messes up the balance of the microbial community and can really hinder digestion. So all those tasty treats we give goats can actually be bad for them if they eat too much? Yeah, unfortunately. Ah, huh, who knew? It just goes to show that even though goats can digest rough forage really well, they still need a balanced diet. That makes sense. Yeah. It's like anything in life. Balance is key. Exactly. So we've covered the rumen and rumination. Yes. But what about the other three chambers? What do they do in this amazing digestive process? Yeah, you're right. Balance is really important. And those other chambers... They're vital to keeping that balance. Okay. Think of it like a uh, multi-stage processing plant. Hmm. So after the rumen, the partially digested food, which, by the way, we call digesta, okay. moves on to the reticulum. The reticulum. Yeah. That's the second chamber, right? What happens there? It's like a filter, basically. Mm -hmm. It catches any heavy or dense material that might have gotten past the rumen. Okay. Like a quality control checkpoint, making sure only the properly processed digesta moves on. Interesting. So that helps prevent blockages later on. Exactly. And speaking of further down the line, the next stop is the omasum. The omasum? Yeah, the third chamber. Okay. Now this one, this one's a bit of a mystery. Really? Even to scientists. Why is that? Well, we know it's crucial for absorbing water. Oh, okay. But we don't know exactly how it all works. It's mm -hmm. like this super efficient sponge squeezing out excess water before it moves on. That makes sense. Water regulation must be important for an animal that lives in those sometimes dry environments. Right. So after the rumen, reticulum, and omasum, the food finally reaches that last chamber, the abomasum. Yeah. And the research called it the true stomach. Does that mean it's basically like our own stomach? In many ways, yeah. It's where the real chemical digestion happens. Okay. It releases enzymes and acid, breaking down those remaining proteins and some mm -hmm. fats. Mm -hmm. It's like the final stage, refining that digesta into this nutrient-rich slurry. Wow, what a journey. From tough plant fibers to nutrient-rich slurry, all thanks to this amazing four-chambered stomach. Right. 
and a whole lot of microbial helpers. Definitely. It's incredible how evolution resulted in such a complex and efficient system. Yeah. So after this wild ride through the four chambers, what happens next? Where do those nutrients actually go? So from the abomasum, the digested nutrients move into the small intestine. Okay. And this is where most of the nutrient absorption happens. Mm -hmm. Think of it as the distribution center where all those valuable nutrients from that initial mouthful of grass are finally delivered into the bloodstream. Makes sense. And whatever's left over goes to the large intestine. Exactly. The large intestine, especially the cecum and colon, is all about absorbing that last bit of water mm. and prepping the waste for elimination. Okay. It's like the cleanup crew making sure nothing goes to waste. It's fascinating how each part of the digestive system has its own special job to do, all working together. Yeah, it is. This deep dive has given me a whole new appreciation for how complex nature is, mm -hmm. even in something that seems as simple as a goat's stomach. Absolutely. And don't forget this incredible efficiency in digesting that tough plant material. Right. That's what lets goats thrive in places where other herbivores would have a hard time. Mm. They can turn those scarce resources into energy and nutrients. It's really a remarkable adaptation. It is. It makes you wonder if we could learn a thing or two from them. That's a great point. Imagine if we could figure out the secrets of their gut bacteria and use that knowledge to improve our own food production. Wow. Or even come up with new ways to break down plant-based materials. That would be revolutionary. It would. But before we get carried away with all the possibilities, we should probably circle back to a really important point from the research. Acidosis. Yeah, you're right. We don't want to give the impression that goats can just eat anything and be fine. Exactly. A balanced diet is crucial for their health. It's especially for younger goats whose systems are still developing. Yeah, young goats are particularly vulnerable to acidosis, right? They are, and the research had some great tips for preventing, like having regular feeding times and not changing their diet too suddenly. Mm -hmm. And if you're raising kids, you got to make sure they get good quality milk replacer. Okay. That's essential. The research also mentioned that feeding green grass or alfalfa to really young kids can cause bloat. Yeah. Why is that? The rumens aren't fully developed yet. Uh, and they can't handle those kinds of forages. Okay. It's best to stick with a little bit of roughage, like hay or chaff, until that rumen matures. So it sounds like there's a lot to think about when it comes to feeding goats, especially the young ones. There is, but luckily there's tons of information out there yeah. to help goat owners make good choices. Right. Just remember, a healthy digestive system is the key to a healthy goat. Mm -hmm. Understanding what they need and giving them the right care is super important. Well said. But before we wrap up this section on goat health, the research emphasized maintaining an ideal rumen environment. Yes. What exactly does that mean? Basically, it's about making sure the rumen has the right conditions for those hardworking microbes to thrive. Okay. It needs to be warm, moist, anaerobic. And slightly acidic. Yes. With a pH between 6.5 and 7. That's right. If I remember correctly. You got it. Keeping that balance is really important for the rumen microbes to do their job efficiently. You know, breaking down those tough plant fibers. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a delicate ecosystem, and any disruptions can throw the whole thing off. It's amazing how everything works together to create that perfect environment for digestion. Yes. It really shows how interconnected nature is. Absolutely. Even something as seemingly simple as a goat's stomach is full of life and complexity. Mm -hmm. It's like a tiny version of the natural world. Yeah. Showing the power of adaptation and that delicate balance that sustains life. So we've explored the four chambers, yeah. delved into the world of rumen microbes, and highlighted the importance of a balanced diet. Right. But there's one fascinating aspect we haven't really touched on yet, the diversity of those rumen microbes. Yeah. Yeah, it's mind boggling to think about all those little guys working away in there. It is. Tell us more about these microbial communities. Oh, yeah. What kind of diversity are we talking about? Well, it, it really is remarkable. Yeah. The research says there can be billions of bacteria in just one milliliter of rumen fluid. Wow, billions. Billions. That's more than all the people on Earth. It is. So what are all these microbes doing? Well, each type has its own little specialty. Okay. Contributing to that whole digestive process. Uh-huh. Some of them break down cellulose, you know, the tough fiber in plants. Right. While others focus on starches and sugars. Mm. There are even some that utilize urea. Urea. Yeah, it's a waste product from protein metabolism. Interesting. So it's like a well-coordinated team. Yeah. 
each type of microbe has its own specific job in breaking down those complex plant materials? Yeah, exactly. And just like any team, the makeup can change depending on the situation. Okay. The research mentioned that the type of feed a goat eats can affect which types of microbes are in the rumen and how many there are. That makes sense. So if the goat eats a lot of grain, it's going to have more starch digesting microbes. Exactly. And that's another reason why a balanced diet is so important. Right. Sudden changes in feed can disrupt this delicate rumen ecosystem yeah and lead to problems like acidosis right we got to keep those microbial communities happy and healthy so they can do their jobs absolutely and it's fascinating to think about the relationship between goats and these microbes yeah it's symbiotic you know the goats provide the environment and the microbes take care of the digestion mm -hmm. everybody wins a perfect partnership it is a great example of how interconnected nature really is it really makes you realize we often think of ourselves as separate from nature yeah but we're all just part of this huge web of life well said this deep dive into goat digestion has really given us a glimpse into that web it has showing us the incredible adaptations and complex relationships even within just one animal's stomach absolutely so as we wrap up this fascinating look at goat digestion What's the key takeaway you want our listeners to remember? Oh, it's just how incredibly efficient the goat's digestive system is. Okay. Their ability to get nutrients from those tough, fibrous plants yeah. is really a testament to the power of evolution mm -hmm. and all those amazing symbiotic partnerships in nature. It truly is a marvel of nature. It is. And it makes you wonder what other superpowers are out there in the animal kingdom. Right. Just waiting to be discovered. Yeah, that's a great point. Maybe there are secrets to, you know, efficient energy use mm -hmm. or waste reduction or even disease resistance. Wow. Hidden away in the digestive systems of other animals. Mm. The possibilities are endless if we just keep exploring and asking questions. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the mysteries of the animal kingdom. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.